there should be a little red light now that says this session is being recorded. So I'm recording this for later viewing. So if you guys have uh, any questions, feel free, again, ask them. Um, if I think it's in between the lines of basics, I'll go ahead and, and duplicate it on here and let you guys know how to work with that. All right, so let's go ahead and get started here. Now, CorelDRAW, again, it's, it's the biggest thing I noticed with CorelDRAW when you're first starting out is overlooking the, the, the software. So basically, just thinking that you need to use every single feature, every single tool that comes with a program to do what we're doing here, which you don't, all right? If you can focus on just the basic tools that we need when designing and creating those vector artworks, then it's gonna make the software a lot easier to understand and it's gonna be easier to get the process down, all right? Because, again, CorelDRAW allows you to do a lot of different things, but what we're working with is your basic vector artwork and also your um, line work as well, your line art. So that's what's gonna, the, the cutter's gonna recognize and it's gonna cut out, all right? So it's gonna be those new vector lines that we're gonna create. All right, so let's jump right to it. So right off the bat, and, and I'm working with Corel X7, guys, so if you guys are in X6, and you guys don't see one of the features I'm working with, let me know. Um, there's a good chance it's, it's the same feature that X6 has. It's just located in a different location in the program. All right. All right. So ooh, let me go ahead and move this out of the way here. I'm not sure why this is still up. All right. So let's go ahead and get started here. So first, right off the bat, let's find out how to bring a file in. So there's there's two types of file types out there. You have your CorelDRAW file, and then you have your other vector artwork, um, your vector files. So your EPS, your SVG. Um, your PLTs, the niece, how to set CorelDRAW to be in inches. Mine keeps going back to millimeters every time I start. Okay, Denise, I'll show you that as well. Um, and right here is where you can change that to inches. But if you go to uh, your, your tools and settings, you can do it through there as well, Denise. I'll show you where those are later on. All right, so with, uh, with those two different file types, let me show you exactly how we're going to be able to open those. So if I go to File, Open, that's going to open all my CDR files, okay? So those are my CorelDRAW files. And to get a CDR file, you just need to go File, Save As, all right? And that's going to create your CDR or CorelDRAW file. So to open those, I'm just going to go to Open. And now if I go, let's say here, oh, I don't know if I have any designs. Let me see if I can, uh, I don't know if I have any designs in here, but let's see. You know what, I think I do have some designs in desktop. All right, so if I go here, at the bottom right here, because I did open, you can see now these are all CDR files here. All right, so I can go to this one right here, which is a, a design we created in the past webinar, the TRW Teachers Teach from the Heart. So if I double click on that, that's going to bring up my CDR file right here. All right, so that opens that file up for me. Now I can start working with this particular file. All right, the one thing you'll notice sometimes is that you do have the file that is all grouped together. All right, so if it's grouped together, and I'm just going to go ahead and group it so you guys can see what happens when it does come in grouped together. What, what, me, what that's telling me is that each individual object here is all combined with the rest of the design. All right, so if I zoom in here and I try to select just the one circle right here on the E, I can't move just that one circle because everything is grouped together. All right, so when you bring a design in and it's grouped together like this, all you need to do is either right click and then do an ungroup all, or we can go up here to the top where it says object hit right here group and then ungroup all and then also you can see with every feature with every main feature in Corel Draw, you can see on the right hand side here it's going to tell you if there's a shortcut key for that particular feature all right so once you go ahead and, and learn a lot of those different shortcuts then you're going to start working and it's going to make the design process a little bit quicker for you because now instead of having to go to object group and ungroup I can just simply hit Control U and it's going to ungroup everything for me. So now I can go in here and select each individual stone. All right. So a lot of questions we get is, hey, why did I bring in this file and I can't only I, I, it, it all moves at once. I can't separate it. So to do that, we have to ungroup it first. All right. So pretty simple there. Uh, Teresa, I see your question. Do I need to save files in CDR to be able to find out the font that the design was originally done in? Teresa. In that case, not CDR. What you need to do is, let's say, if you're working with a font and it's true to a font format and you send me that file without converting it to curves, in that case, it doesn't matter if you save it as CDR, you have to convert it to curves for, in order for my computer to recognize that font if I don't have it already saved in my computer. All right? And I can get to that when we get to the text, uh, to the text function of, the, of CorelDRAW. All right, so let's go ahead and move along. Now, that was the open file type there, so which is, which is your CDR file. 
We also have import. Now import is if you purchase, let's say you purchase a design from a website and the only thing they have offering is the EPS file. In that case, you wanna do the import, all right? So PNG, JPEGs, those are all gonna be imported in. So hit import. Now this is gonna bring me to my folders here. And then let's say Rudy Trainings here and I can do, uh, let's see, Falcon's design right here. Now I'll just double click on that. And that's gonna bring up this file here. Now, hopefully that file is not corrupt because it looks like it's slowing down my Corel. So there it is. And all there was, too, is there's a bunch of things going on in that file. So obviously, not just that file in there. So let's get rid of that. But what you can see is actually pick, brings in that file that I already originally wanted to save and bring into my Corel Draw. All right. So import, we're going to use when we're not working with a Corel Draw file. And then open is if we're working with Corel Draw files. All right. Now, the one thing is you'll notice when you do open, when you hit open, those other file types won't show up in the folders. All right, same thing with, um, excuse me, not the same thing with import because if you go to import, you can still bring in a CDR file as well. All right, but you can bring in a PNG EPS through the open functions of Corel. All right, so that's how to bring in a file uh, and basically start working with a file that was already purchased or a file that you had uh, originally exported or saved as here in Corel Draw. All right. So any questions in regards to opening a file or um, just getting started working with a file? Excellent. All right, so the next one I want to show you guys, and this is a pretty important one here, which is view. All right, so view right here, we have some different types of, uh, of features that we can work with in the view drop-down menu here. All right, the main one that I want to show you guys is wireframe. All right, wireframe is very, very... Um, important to work with because let's say I type in let's obviously uh, let's get a script font going because the scripts are really unique all right so let's type out the word baseball now I'm gonna go ahead and bring out the wizard just for this time um, just to use the fonts here just because I prefer using my uh, the wizard to find fonts it just I think it's a little bit easier to work with so let's say we have this baseball brush script font and another thing I want to bring up uh, this toolbar right here guys if you guys aren't don't have the TRW Stone Wizard. Uh, this toolbar right here, you guys won't be able to see. That's actually a custom toolbar that we've created that comes with the TRW Stone Wizard. All right, so we have baseball typed out here. All right, so right off the bat, this looks like it's a good font, like a font that I can send over to my cutter. All right, because we're right now we're enhanced view. All right, so all you see is actually you see the fill. You don't see anything else, but watch what happens if I go to view and wireframe. Now this exposes something else. Notice what's happening here. Now that I take that fill away and all I see is the outline of my design, watch what I can see now. If I zoom in here, I see all the difficult, or excuse me, all the, all the layers that are actually overlapping. All right, so notice the A overlapping with the S, the S overlapping with the E. So what happens is if, oh, Debbie, you lost me. Anybody else having issues with the sound? Okay, perfect, back. Excellent. All right, so again, we have the A and the S. They're overlapping. So right now, if I go to cut this, it's not going to cut out correctly for me because it's going to cut out the A. Now now that it's done cutting out the A, it's also going to cut out the S. But when it cuts out the S, it's going to still want to cut out this line right here. All right. So wireframe shows all those imperfections that we have going on with this particular design here and lets us know, hey, we need to fix this particular design before we go to setting set uh, before we send it to our cutter. And the reason for it is because you're going to waste materials. All right, that's not going to look good. You're going to see once you, once it cuts out that those little gaps right there are going to be seen, and it's going to make the design look really ugly. So we need to fix that. All right, so that's where another very useful tool in RTW, excuse me, the Corel Draw software is our shaping tools. All right, so let's go back to enhance. Or actually, let's leave it in wireframe so you guys can see what's going to happen here. All right, so to find those shaping tools, we can go to object up here. So notice object now. We have some different features we can work with here to either correct the design or manipulate the designs to do different things. All right. In this case, I want to weld it all together. So where do I find my weld feature? I can go here to shaping under the object at the top here. So object, shaping, and then look at that, weld. And notice because I can use it's only the weld feature is the only feature I can use right now. So that's the only one that's going to be lit up. And then boundary, because boundary, I can also create just an outline uh, surrounding that particular text. 
All right, but right now the only tool I can use right now is weld So let's go ahead and left click on weld and see what happens bam So you see that it cleans up those that text now It's a nice flowing script font that I can send to my cutter and my cutter is gonna recognize that a is connected with the S and not overlapping the S. So bam, now we give it a clean cut for that particular text there. All right, but we wouldn't be able to see that unless we used wireframe. All right, so wireframe again, before you cut any design out, just go back and use your wireframe real quick to make sure that there's nothing, um, nothing odd with the design or anything left behind. Because sometimes if you do trace a design, it will leave behind, uh, let's say you, you traced out a text and there were some fillings that you don't see because they're white. Um, that case, you might send it to the cutter, it might crash or corral because, hey, there's something extra in that design that's making it cause, or it's causing it to act weird and do some different things. Denise, once welded, is it permanent or can you still change font? No, Denise, once you weld it, that's it. You're stuck with that particular weld. Now, the one thing you can do is I can select my design here or I can just go up here to the undo. And then let me go to wireframe. See how I, I go undo? Now we're back to that text format, and I can go in here and double click on it. And now we can type in football if we wanted to. But again, now that I type, now when we undo that, notice if I go back to my wireframe here. Now I'm using the wireframe um, in Corel Draw, excuse me, the wireframe toolbar right here that we've created just because obviously, you know, it's, it's under view, but just to make things go a little bit quicker, I'm just going to use the one right here in my TRW Stone Wizard toolbar. All right, so again, I undid what we did originally, which was the welding. So now I'm able to go back and type another text out and then hit weld again. All right, so now I'll go here and then we're going to go object, shaping, and then weld. And then if I go to wireframe, you can see, bam, it welds it all together again. All right, so the best way to go about it, Denise, would be just to do a quick undo um, if you want to change the word for it. But now let's say if I did this here and exported it, and then try to bring it in later on, then I wouldn't be able to change that. All right, it's it stuck how it is at that point. All right, anybody have any questions in regards to wireframe and welding? Okay, and, and again, Denise, it's, it's, it's permanent once you do export it and you know leave this page and then bring it back in later on. Excellent. So let's go ahead and move on here. So we've worked with wireframe, we've worked with um, welding tool, but now let's go ahead and get back to the object tool or object window here because object window, there's a lot of other things here that we can work with. All right. So let's go ahead and show you what else we can uh, utilize in this um, object window here. So let's go ahead and draw a couple boxes here. So here's one that does become very handy, especially when you're doing a lot of different design types out there. So let's say we have a couple boxes here, and we'll just go ahead and change the colors to these. All right, so let's say I want to bring this box right here, the green box, to the front, completely to the front, because right now it's in the back. All right, so it's in the back behind those two other boxes here, the yellow and the pink, but I want to make sure that that green is showing in the front of those two boxes. So to do that, let me highlight the green here, I'm going to go to Object, and then we're going to go to Order, all right? Now, in Order, watch this. I can do it to front of page, so that brings it all the way to the front. I can also go Object, Order, and I can do uh, to back of layer. See that? So it brings it to the back. Now we can also go here, and we can do Forward 1. So now instead of going to the front of the page, it actually skips just the one that's in front, not both of those, all right? So now it's in between. So you can see just by changing the, the order, we can go ahead and bring some different objects or layers to the front or some to the back. All right. Now that's going to become useful if you're working with like an outline and you want to make you want to you want the outline to show through to be a little bit more bold. In that case, you want to do a outline. So and we're talking if there's a two color design, of course. So you have a two color design or text and then you can bring that outline to the front, which is going to make it more bold. All right. And that's saying that you have it already trapped. So let's go ahead and show you what else we can do here. So back to object here, we can go order. Oh, let me go ahead and select that. Let's go ahead and select this one here, the one all the way to the back. Let's see what we missed here. Um, okay, so right here at the bottom, we have in front of. Now watch what I do if I hit in front of. Now it gives me the option to select where I want to put that pink square in front of. So let's say I want to go in front of the green. Just go ahead and left click on the green 
and now it brings it to in front of the green. So if you have a lot of different objects or layers you're working with, you can work with those different tools under the objects order, and then you can work with those to be able to um, position what where you want each layer to be. All right. And now you also see sometimes when um, if you're working with a wizard with the mockups, that's another useful way to use the <clears throat> the back to front or orders is if you you know if you have a design if you're doing a custom design you have to bring that box to the front to be able to do a um, a mock-up all right and, and and that's I don't want to get you guys confused with that but that's uh, later on if you guys want to see some of the different things that can be done with the wizard we do have those videos and webinars as well all right so anybody have any questions in regards to um, object over here and then order Okay, perfect. So let's go back a couple here. So let me, I'm going to go ahead and use the same thing. All right. So let's say we have this now, and now we want to do some different effects with these um, objects here. All right. So object and then shaping. So now notice underneath weld, we still have a couple of the different features or tools that we can work with. All right. So trim. Watch what trim is going to do for me. So let's select this one and this one here. And basically, I want to trim this, the pink square in between, through the green in the back. All right. So watch, watch what I mean by that. Let's go ahead and select the pink here. So just selecting that pink, I'm going to hold Shift. And now if you hold Shift and select another object while holding Shift, now notice that it selects just those two boxes. So it didn't select the yellow with it. All right. So again, I'm going to select the pink here. So selecting the pink, I'm going to hold down Shift. All right. So while holding Shift, I'm going to left click on the green. Now I can select those two objects there. All right. So now watch what I can do. And again, you can see that new toolbar pops up right up here. Okay, so that toolbar right here is going to be very useful because those those features right here are the same ones that you see right here in our shaping. All right, it just shows up right there for you. But now if I click away from that, notice that we're back to our standard uh, workspace setting here. All right, so the only time that tool or that toolbar is going to pop up is if you're working with objects that can be welded or trimmed or simplified or so on. All right, so let's go ahead and select that pink and the green again and show you what's going to happen here. Uh, so again, you got the tools there, but I want to show you what each tool is going to do. And the best way to see those is if you actually see the name on them. And now you can see on the left-hand side right here, you actually have the image of what, of what each tool is. So once you get a little bit more familiar with the name to the picture, then you can start using these a little bit, a little bit um, quicker for the designing process because now you know what each one does for you. Now again, you can also hover over and it's going to tell you, but you know that that can be a little bit tedious as well. So instead of hovering or trying to see what each one does and wait there a couple seconds before it actually tells you what the name and what the function is, you can just go to shaping here and then do trim if you wanted to. So let's go ahead and left click on trim now and watch what happens. Now if I drag that pink away, you see what happened here? Now because I only selected the pink and the green, it did nothing to the yellow, but everything behind it was trimmed out. So it actually used the, the, the pink object right here to cut a shape through that green. All right, so that's what that trim did for me there. Does anybody have any questions in regards to trim? Now, trim is one that you guys will see we've, we've used a lot of recently, um, especially when we're trying to create a two-color design with kind of the shirt shown through the middle. That's when you want to use the trim, all right? So trim is going to be a very popular one. Let's go ahead and show you the simplify. So simplify, let's say, let's get rid of these and use something a little bit more, um, something that we're going to be actually work with. So let's go back to, let's type cheer. All right, so cheer here. And we're going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to go ahead and just bring out my stone wizard and add a quick island to the outside here just to create a second layer. <clears throat> All right. Now I will show you also how to do this in Corel here momentarily, but just for the purposes of showing you what the Simplify is going to do for you, I want to go ahead and create something that you can actually work with and uh, kind of get use out of. So of course we have our two layers here. We have cheer and then we have the background here. So it's a two color design. All right. But what if I want to make, if, what if I just want the pink showing, all right? So just an outline of the pink, and I want to get rid of the black. But where the black is, we're going to see the shirt showing through, all right? So to do that, we're going to go ahead and select our design again. So select both colors, all right? So both colors are selected. We're going to go to the top to object here. We're going to go to shaping, and then I'm going to do simplify, 
All right, so watch what Simplify does for me. I can remove that top layer now, and bam, there's the cheer. Now I can go ahead and let's say I want to add a backdrop so you can see the shirt showing through. Let's go black here. Now you see what happened? Because the cheer's in the back of the, of the page, we got to move it up to the front. All right, so how did we do that before? Okay, perfect. I see uh, you guys are paying attention. Excellent. So yes, we're going to do the black box to the back of the page. Now again, I can go to object, I can go to order, and then we're going to do back of page. And now, see that original design there? Now it's showing because now it moved the block, uh, the block or the box that we just created to the back of the page, and then that brought that design to the front. So now we have the cheer showing through. And as you can see, originally we had that black layer going on top of the pink layer, but because we simplified it out and took that out of the uh, that out of the equation, now it's showing the shirt showing through. All right, so that's that would be your garment or your sweatshirt showing through or your bag. And then it's obviously saving you material because now you don't have to do a two cut. You only have to cut out the outline of this particular design. All right. So, again, that was using our simplify tool. Uh, Denise, when you first created the three boxes, you colored each one. I see two columns of color on right panel. What is each column used for? Is there any difference in using one over the other? Uh, yes. And, Denise, you notice with these are actually the same exact one ones I want to say yeah this is the same exact one I'm not sure why these two are the same but let me see yeah they're the same so I can I can actually get rid of it and notice up here we have those little three dots there so I can drag that out left click right there in the X and that gets rid of it all right if if you don't see those three little dots up there right click on the toolbar that you want to work with so you can right click on the toolbars and at the bottom right here you have lock so if I lock it you can lock all those toolbars or unlock depending on what you want to do all right. Now, Denise, to get those to get those colors right there, that's going to be under your Windows tab right here. All right. And I'll show you guys how to bring those out and use those as well. The biggest difference for the different colors is you're going to have your RGB colors and you're going to have your uh, CMYK colors. So depending on what you're trying to really do as far as the designing process, you might want to use some different color palettes. All right. All right, so, and then that's also going to give you a little bit better matching for, you know, if, let's say if you're working with a certain color mock-up, uh, shirt mock-up, you know, that way you can go ahead and match it to that particular style that the, the distributor or the blank wholesales uh, shirt company is selling. Yes, exactly, Denise, yes. So if a customer gives you the RGB colors, you can set exactly to what they want. For the most part, yes, and as long as it's on there. And I'll show you, I'm almost to that point there, Denise. I'll show you once we get to the Windows tab up here, I'll show you exactly how to use the RGB colors, all right? All right, so let's go ahead and keep moving here. <clears throat> so we've done orders, we've done the grouping. Oh, I'm sorry, let's, uh, let's do grouping right now. So grouping, all right, so let's say we have this box here, we have this box here. Let's put another box here. Now, so we're just going to put a couple of different boxes around here. So let's go ahead and color these in. So we have all these different boxes here that we can work with. But we will only want to, let's say right now, I only want to work with this box and the blue box right here. All right. But let's make this simple. Let's make this where I can remove these out of the way for right now and only work on these, or excuse me, the blue and the, and the purple, all right? So what I want to do in that case is combine, excuse me, group the yellow and, the, and the, the gray right here so I can just get those out of the way but still keep them together, all right? So to do that, we can select the gray here. I can go shift and select on the, on the yellow. So I'm only selecting those two right there. So notice if I, can, I, can, if I have them both selected, I can drag them both out at once, all right? But if I click away from it, now I'm still stuck with each individual object. All right, so I'm going to go back a couple steps here. I'm hitting Control Z as in Zebra to go back as well. All right, so Control Z. Now I have them both selected here. Let's go to Object. I can go to Group and then hit Group Objects right here. And now those two are grouped together, so I can click away from the objects here. I can go ahead and go back to it, click on it, and then drag those just by clicking on one individual object there. All right, so now it makes it into one object rather than two separate objects. So that makes it very simple, especially if you're working with a, a rhinestone design that let's say you have text and then you have the, the, the logo in the inside. Then you want to make sure that you have each individual part grouped together so you can make it fit a lot nicer. All right. Here's the other important part. So let's say we have now 
I don't want to confuse you all with too much here, but I do want to do something real quick here. So let me type out the word baseball. All right, and this is one one way that you can see where the use of the grouping comes in. All right, so we have baseball here, and let's type that out mom. All right, so watch this. I can select, I can convert these into rhinestone files here. So again, this part right here, we're just gonna use my the wizard real quick just to get to the point where we want to show that. Oh. Just because I want to get to that point where I want to show you what we're doing here. Not sure what happened with that one. Let me go back to uh, mom fonts, and then we're gonna go ahead and do the 130. All right, so we have mom here, and then we have baseball mom. But let's say I want to bring these together. All right, so I want to center these two together. Watch what happens if, even if this is a different color. Okay, so I'm gonna get rid of I'm gonna get rid of the wizard for now. All right, so we have baseball and we have mom typed out here. All right, so watch what happens if I select these two together right now, and I did um let's i'm gonna hit the letter c as in cat to center it all all right so i can center it all cent center it all but watch what happens you see what happens is it brings all my stones together because they're not grouped all right so when i center it and try to bring it all one on top of the other notice it doesn't do that all right and that's because the text wasn't grouped together so i'm gonna go back one here i'm gonna go to my back key and now let's go ahead and group these so i'm gonna highlight the baseball here Let's go to object. I'm going to go to group and then right here, group objects. Same thing with mom here. I'm going to go here, bam, group, group objects. Now watch what happens when I highlight these two, go to object, and then let's go to align and distribute, and let's just do align centers vertically. Bam. So see how it brings them together now? And that's the same thing as me hitting this letter C as in, as in cat. All right, so see how it brought one on top of the other and centers are perfectly on the page? That was because I was able to now, instead of having each individual circle its own object, I just grouped it all, all, grouped all those circles together, and that created one object. So now that's almost like, uh, like almost reading it as, a, as a box, as a rectangle. Same thing with the mom here. So now I can select both of these, hit letter C, or go to Object, Align, and Distribute here, and hit Align Centers, and it sends, centers both of those texts. Right. So again, that's one very good use of the grouping method. <clears throat> if you're working with rhinestone designs and you're trying to center it all together, that's one huge use for that. Because if not, again, it's going to bring all the circles together and center each individual circle to one point. All right. So anybody have any questions in, in regards to why we group those two texts together before we actually align them? Perfect, beautiful. So let's go ahead and keep moving along. All right, so the next one we want to run into is I want to show you guys the effects. So effects is where we're going to use our envelope tool mostly and then our contour, all right? Now, the one thing is you'll notice is with these, notice how they have the little check mark on the left-hand side, all right? So those little left-hand, uh, those little check marks just tell me that I already have my windows already open in Corel. All right, so what does that even mean? All right, so by windows, we're saying Dockers, which are right here on the right-hand side. So watch this. Now I know that my contour is selected, all right? So if I go here to the right, bam, there's my contour. So left-click on contour. Now we have our contour docker here ready to work with, all right? So what is contour docker? So what is this docker right here going to do for me? Let me show you guys. So let's say we type out the word, uh, let's say TRW. And we want to add a second layer to this design here. So earlier when I was showing you guys how to do, um, earlier when I was showing you guys how to do, when I created a two-color cheer design and I showed you how to do the simplify, I used the TRW Stone Wizard, which simplifies this step. But let's say you don't, you're not working with the wizard and you want to create an, a second layer to this design here or add a second color to my TRW text here. We're going to go right here to where it says, right here at the top one is going to be basically the number of steps or number of new layers that you're going to create. And then here is the spacing, all right, the contour spacing between my new layer and my original layer. So let's say we want to make that, we can make that 0 0.20. And let's say we want to add one new color here. Now watch the corners here. I'll show you where that's going to become, that's going to come handy. Now all I need to do is hit apply. Nope, oh, said the, the contour is too large, so let's go back to 0.0. All right, so we're going to go ahead and create another contour. I think I did that to the inside. Okay, so let's go back, and that's what I was doing wrong there. Let's go back here. 
Now the biggest thing is, let me make sure, and you see when I go to wireframe, it tells me that that's still there. So I need to go back a couple steps and then get rid of that. All right, so now we're back to our original text here, TRW. But the big thing is, notice up here at the top, guys, we have inside contour, we have the outside contour, and then we have to the center. All right, what I had selected was to the inside, so I try to create a new contour to the inside. In this case, I want to make it to the outside because it's going to be a new layer, um, an, outside, an outer layer that we can create. So we're going to go outside, left click on that because that's going to select that option that we're going to now create one contour to the outside. Uh, again, we have the point, well, let's just make that point 0.15. Nope, 0.15. And now we can go ahead and hit apply. So hit apply. Now notice it comes in, it's coming in like it didn't do anything. But the reason for that is, if I go here, you can see that actually there is. It's just both the inside layer and the new layer that we created is black. All right, so to get rid of that, to basically break those apart and separate them, all I need to do is I can right click on my design now. All right, so click away from it, right click on it, and then hit where it says break contour group apart or control, control K, or we can go up here to object and do the same thing right here, break contour apart. All right, so left click on that. Now I can go in here and separate these two layers. So you can see we have the two layers here. So we have the original layer and the new contour layer that we created. So let's go Control Z back a couple steps, and now I can make that a different color. And you can see what we did was have now the inside and our new layer. So there's our two color design. Now, of course, I can go here, highlight my design. <clears throat> we have up here, obviously, our different features that we can work with. So let's go ahead and do a trim. Bam, trim that out. Now we have TRW, basically the same thing, just showing you the longer way to do it with Corel Draw than we did with the TRW Stone Wizard. All right, so again, type out TRW. We're going to go to Contour, which is under our effects, and then we can set up the different contour spacing and then how many different contour lines we want to create or how many new layers we want to create. All right, so that's the contour, uh, contour feature there. Does anybody have any questions in regards to the contour features or how to work with the contour feature or how to separate the two colors? once you create the contour that trim with contour uh, i'm not sure where you trying to trying to see what you're referring to Stefan. <clears throat> that trim with contour <clears throat> made it look like simplified yeah yeah and trim and <coughs> excuse me guys wow excuse me um trim and simplify are very very similar tools very similar tools. And that's why it looks like that, Steph. Especially when you're doing different things. Like uh, you'll notice that those there's a couple different features in, in Corel that look very similar. Um, trim and simplify those. All right, so let's go ahead and move on here. So the next things I want to show you guys is actually the tools, the basic tools that are located here on the left hand. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Forgot one. This is for uh, the color palettes. All right, so the color palettes are going to be located under your windows right here. So almost close to last right here, the second to last, we have window, all right? So now here we have color palettes, and these are the color palettes that I have installed into Corel, uh, but basically you have your CMYK, which is selected, so that's the one that's selected here. Now if I want to select, like we were asked earlier, the RGB colors, I can select, just left click right here where it says RGB palette, and bam, that brings my new palette in here. And you can see the colors a little bit more vibrant, all right? So if I click on it, see how the, the difference between the two pinks right here? All right, so that's my new palette there that was created. Now, if I want to see the rest of the colors at the bottom of each color palette, we have those little arrow keys here, and we can go ahead and press those down if you want to see more into it. All right. Oh, I got something going on on the left-hand side over here. Let me see. I think I have the graphics. Yep. Okay. Let me get rid of that real quick. All right, so if you want to go ahead and move this down. I can go ahead and hit that little down arrow right there. You can see the rest of the colors. So it's not just limited to the colors you see at the top. There's a lot more colors underneath that you can still look work with. So you have all your darker shades over here. So you have your purples, your blues, your reds, and then goes all the way up to the top here. We got the greens and then some other colors here with the blacks, the shadow, the grays up here. So all the different ones that you can, uh, all the different colors that you can work with are all going to be inside that window color palettes here and then you can select whichever one you want to work with all right so again very simple to drag that out and drop it right into that workspace now i can go right click if you, oh and you see if i go, if i hover over it as well it's going to tell you this is the rgb palette and this right here is the cmyk palette 
All right. So those two right there are going to be able to uh, are going to tell you which ones you're working with in that particular case. All right. All right. So let's go ahead and move on. Now we have here is going to be our toolbar with all of our basic tools. All right. So the basic pick tool. You have your basic tracing tools, your rectangle tool, ellipse tool, and so on. Now, another thing you'll notice is a lot of these tools have these little kind of a triangle in the bottom right corner. And all those little triangles there have a diff bring up a different option, all right? So a drop-down menu for different features inside of that particular tool. So the top one right here, we have freehand pick tool, all right? So let's say we have, let's say we have a bunch of different objects here. All right, so we have all these different objects. So let's say we have all those different objects here. All right, and I want to select, let's say I want to just select this one right here and then this stone right here. All right, so, and I'm saying stones because I'm used to working with rhinestones and circles for some reason just remind me of that. But let's say, you know, this is a difficult area to get to this particular stone right here. And you want to just go ahead and select, let's say, these two right here. And these are all surrounding it. Now, of course, I understand you can go here and just select these two here. But let's say you want to go ahead and get around in that and select um, select those with your pick tool, all right? So the pick tool, I still have to go like this. And notice what happens is it selects that outside one here, all right? So that's not what I want. All I want to select is these two in here, all right? So watch what I can do. I can grab that freehand pick tool. So click on that bottom little right triangle down there on the right-hand corner. Select fr freehand pick tool. Now I can zoom in here and watch this. I'm going to left click down and select just those two circles there. Now watch this. I can just drag those out and bam. Now nothing else was touched or moved out of the way. I selected the two stones that I wanted to work with or the two objects I wanted to work with and drag those out. Now I can go get to actually working on these on, on this project here. All right. So if you want to extract something out of a design that's already pre-made, especially with the rhinestone design, and it's tough to get to those areas in the inside and you don't want to select one by one, that freehand pick tool is going to be very useful. Very, very useful. All right, so let's go here, delete all those, and delete that one. Does anybody have any questions in regards to the freehand tool? I know it's one that not a lot of people know about, but can be, but can, can be very, very useful, especially if you're working with rhinestone designs. All right, so let's go ahead and move on. Now, the shape tool is, if not one of the most, is probably the most important tool here. It's just going to allow you to edit and manipulate and do a lot more unique things to a particular vector file. All right, so let's just show you real quick what the shape tool can do just from an outsider's point of view. So let's say we type in the word football. All right, so we have the word football typed out, and I, sl and I just, just click left-click on that shape tool. All right, so shape tool again, it's right here, the second tool down. So watch what happens. I Now I have shape tool here selected. So what you'll see is we have these arrows here, and then we also have these squares here. All right, so watch what happens. If I left click on that, on that, uh, on the arrow here, going to the right, I left click on it, and then drag to the right, and watch what happens. See how the letters get further apart? So watch what's going to happen when I left click on the arrow and bring them closer. Now all my letters are, are closer together. All right, so we can have those closer together. Let's see what happens. Let's go to wireframe real quick. Bam, now this is another reason to use wireframe. All right, so now we know we have a lot of overlapping letters here. So you can do a weld here and go how it is, or you can separate them a little further. So we can go ahead and separate them a little further. That way, those letters aren't touching. So there we go. Now watch here. You see how the gap in between the A and the L right here? There's a little bit of over overlap right there, but there's a little bit of a space right between the B and the A right here, all right? So watch what I can do to bring that A closer to the B so it's not actually overlapping with the L here. So I can go here and just click on that little square, all right? And if I go to my wireframe, you can see that black little square right there, all right? So now watch this. Just go ahead and drag this to the left a little bit, and bam. Now we've moved just that little that letter there. I can also use my... My arrow keys on my keyboard to move those as well. So I can move it up, I can move it down to the right. I can do the same thing with my mouse. So left click on that on that box again, drag it all the way all the way around my screen. So that's what I can do with that shape tool, just working with the text. So something very simple. All right. So that shape tool is going to be not only for your vector files, but also when you're working with text, you can also work with that um, shaping tool. Is anybody else having trouble 
having problems with their streaming or is it just my internet? The screen isn't changing along with your audio. Uh, Debbie, I'm I don't I'm not seeing anybody else having issues with with um, with the connection. If you guys are, just let me know, and that way we can uh, figure out the issue with it. Can you set the kerning to be exact? Oh no no no, just uh, Denise, you can actually set you can actually click on more than just one. So basically, Denise's question was, can you select a more than one box? And you can. I can go here and just select these right here, just highlight those four right there, and just only move those four if I wanted to as well. So I can move just those fours if I want if I wanted to. So now it's football. I'm guessing not really a sport, but but that's how you can be able to do that. Um, how do we choose the multiple selections? Uh, Debbie, how do we get the little boxes to manipulate? Where's the current selection? Okay, so that's by going to the shape tool. So select the, once you're in football here. So select football. Now I can go here to shape tool. So the shape tool is the second one here, and now I can go ahead and get those little boxes to manipulate that text. So now I can go in here and change those letters around. Bam. You got the T here. Bam. And move it around how you wish. All right. No problem. All right. So that would be the first one. Now let's see what else we can do with the shape tool. So I want to bring in a design real quick that we can trace and then actually utilize that shape tool. So now we're going to be able to utilize two different tools. Um, well, I'm gonna be able to show you two different cool tools here that you guys can work with. All right, so let's say we have let's come let me go ahead and bring in this PNG file right here. All right, so now we're gonna bring it all together. All right, so we have a PNG file here that we've just brought up. I have this on my desktop. Now let's go back to wireframe, and again, you're gonna see where I'm. Every time I bring in a design or I'm doing something, I'm at some point I'm using my wireframe. All right, so view wireframe. So you see what what's happening here when I go to wireframe. Right now, it's telling me that this design right here, all it's going to cut out if I send this to my cutter is going to be this box around my design, all right? So the bats inside of those aren't going to be cutting out, all right? So what do we need to do? We need to vectorize this file, all right? That's going to give us those cut lines for my cutter to recognize it. So I'm going to go back to Enhanced View. Actually, I'm going to show you another cool tool here. So we're going to put a lot of different tools together for one design, all right? So now what I can do is, let's say I want to, I only want to really trace that top bat there because these are kind of pixelated, and I know it's going to be tough to crop those out. So let me see what I can do here. I'm going to go here to my crop tool, and let's just go ahead and crop those out. And again, don't worry about that second one here. Don't worry about that one. I'm just going to left click here. Bam. So now we just have that one left over here. Now let's go ahead and trace this. All right, so I didn't want that little one down there at the bottom, and we'll get go. We'll go ahead and get rid of this this one when we trace it as well. But now we're ready to go ahead and trace. All right. Now the thing I want to, I want you guys to look at it is at the top here. Notice how we have edit bitmap and trace bitmap. Watch. If I click away from my PNG file, notice how that goes away as well. All right. So click on it again. Now we have trace bitmap. So that's another way to know if your design is not a vector file or a bitmap. So now let's go ahead and left click on trace bitmap. Now we can do a quick trace. The quick trace is basically your last trace that you worked with. It's just going to be saved as your quick trace. Our outline trace is where we want to go to. Uh, let's go ahead and do a simple, simple just clip art um, outline trace here. Uh, and now, guys, I I'm not going to cover too much of this particular part of CorelDRAW in this webinar. We do have some different webinars that are ba are focusing on just the tracing features that I think will benefit you guys a lot more than uh, if I try to cover all these right now. All right, so make sure you guys go back and watch those and get a little bit of understanding of the tracing. I just want to show you that it can be done in Corel and where you can find those features. All right, so right here, let's go to clip art and left click on that. Now this is going to give me my power trace tool or uh, window here. Now you'll notice here we have detail smoothing and corner smoothness. Now with those, I can change the settings and it's going to change the actual look of the design. All right, so I can change the detail a little bit, I can change the smoothing, and so on. All right, and I would just recommend going in there and playing around with those different settings to see what each one's going to do for it. We also have here where we have options, and we can do a delete original image. We can do remove background, and some different things in there that are going to make the design pop a little bit more, or it makes things a little bit easier because now it deletes that original image. You don't have to worry about that one. Another cool thing you can do here is you can do the preview. Now here, if I go to the drop-down menu right here, you can see where we have a water wireframe overlay. 
and that's going to show you the wireframe view of it and I can zoom in and see if there's anything weird going on so I can zoom in with my little my little scroller on my mouse and go back to zoom out or up to zoom in so that's going to show me the outline and this if you guys are working with the designer edition if you guys worked with designer edition in the past very very similar to that feature when you're actually tracing in that in that particular software all right so let's just go here before and after now another thing I want, you, I want you guys to pay attention to is down here at the bottom it's going to tell me the number of colors so even though you see just black there there's actually three colors in this design we also have the number of nodes now nodes that's what we're going to work on when we're using the shape tool all right and then we have the number of curves so this design looks good we're ready to trace it let's hit OK bam now we have our new trace here all right let's get rid of that PNG original image now watch what happens when I go to my wire my wireframe view you see this we no longer just have a box around that around that bat now we actually have the outline so when I send this to my cutter that's going to re recognize it and it's going to cut that out now you notice up here what we have is a couple pieces right here that didn't fill in all right so another great use of wireframe because now I know hey now we need to fix this area up so how am I going to do that because it's all together right now so if I go back to my enhanced view notice how it's all together both of these are all one object and same with that little piece at the top here the little the ear piece all right so let's go ahead and ungroup it all so I can work with those individual pieces now so again object group ungroup objects now we can go in here and let's get rid of this one because we really don't want to we don't want that one there we can always just change the size of this one and place it where we want so all we need is one now if I zoom in here again we have that piece that's that's kind of off if I go here and here select the just the bat here then do a weld watch that bam now I connected those two together now that's connected there now we can go with our shape tool and start fixing some different areas in this particular trace so sh shape tool again the second tool down from our pick tool and if I select my object now left click on the object what you'll see now is these little boxes here so those are your nodes so remember earlier when we did the trace it gave us the number of nodes on the bottom that's what we're going to be working with with that shape tool all right so you see here where we have this kind of a rounded section here let's highlight all that let's see what's going on here actually and you can see I can move it around so nothing really I think it was just kind of the way it was let me go back a few there and show you what I'm going to do all right so I thought there was going to be a node there but there isn't it looks like it's just kind of how the lines came together but watch this if I just click in that area right there and drag up you see how it's kind of unfolding it now I can see here what's making this kind of odd is this node right here so if I highlight that node I can hit delete and you see what it did there clean that right up same thing right here I don't want that to be a sharp corner right there I can select it left click on it hit delete and now it cleans it up so you can see how I can go through whole, throughout the whole design and clean up the design by changing the nodes. All right. Another great thing you can do is you can select a spot on this object here. So let's say right here, I can left click on that spot and then up here at the top toolbar, this is our nodes or our shape tool uh, toolbar up here. Now I can go here and add a node. All right. So left click on the add a nodes feature right there. Now this is my node. Now watch this. You see how you have these arrows or these control point arrows that are that that show up when we create that node watch what that's gonna do I can grab that arrow right here and now I can change the direction of that object you see that now it's changed completely the properties of that particular wing right there has changed completely it's nowhere it's not symmetrical how it's supposed to be on this side all right so I can go in there manually move them around and do some different things with it all right now see how we have a point right here at the bottom if I right click let's say I want to make that into a rounded edge I can right click on that and do to curve and now we can go ahead and make that into a curve you see that so now it's curved it so it's not a sharp corner more anymore now it's a curve all right so again the shape tool is going to be very useful it's one thing you're going to use quite often when you're doing the tracing or when you're doing your different uh, uh, if you're working with a text tool a lot of different things you can do all right now another one I'll show you that you can work with with that shape tool let's say I want to create a rectangle all right so a little bit further down the ways here in your basic tools we have the rectangle tool so if I left click on the rectangle tool to create a, a rectangle I can left click and just drag and it's gonna become a rectangle now watch what happens if I hold control 
and left click. So now it's becoming a perfect symmetrical shape. All right, so I can make a, per a perfect square, or we can go further. And now, it, well, I let go. So the biggest thing you got to do there is hold control, let go of the left click first, and then you left go, let go of control. All right, so again, that perfect square is going to create for me there. All right, but what I want to show you guys is if I click on that rectangle tool there and I go up here to shape tool, so again, we got our rectangle tool there. Let's change the color for you so you guys can see a little bit better. So select the box here. Now I can go ahead and left click on my shape tool. And when I do that, notice what it does is gives me these little boxes up here. All right, so again, those nodes. Now watch what happens if I just grab one of those nodes here and drag to the right. Bam, so you see it actually creates now rounded edges for my box there, for my rectangle. All right, now watch what happens if I go to the top here. And you can see where we have these different um, corners here, all right? So now I can do the scallop corner here, and bam, look at that. Now it looks like a movie ticket. All right, we can do this one here, and now we have those sharp edges or line segments there. So you can switch those around how you wish, and then we can go here and move around. Let's go back to the rounded edges if we wanted to. So a lot of different things. We can go back to my shape tool. Let's go select that scallop edge there again and show you what's going to happen. If I bring it closer together, you can see now it looks like a puzzle piece there. So a lot of different things you can do just by, by using that rectangle tool and then utilizing the shape tool that can going to allow you to do a lot more manipulating to that particular object there. All right. Anybody have any questions in how we did all that there? How we were able to manipulate the edges and the corners with that shape tool? Okay, perfect, perfect. So I know, man, this time flies when you're going through a lot of these different uh, basic tools here. Um, so we got about five minutes. I, I probably will go over just a tad bit here. Um, but I do want to show you some of the different tracing tools as well. So let's say we have, we want to trace a design out. All right, so... Again, let's say we want to trace that bat. All right, so let's bring this in here again and trace this bat out. All right, so we have a couple different tools in here to allow us to do that. All right, so we have right here underneath our magnifying glass, which is our zoom in and zoom out, we have our tracing tools. All right, again, hit that little down arrow, that little triangle on the bottom here. Now we have all of our tracing tools. All right, so let's say we want to trace this design out. We can use the freehand tool here. Now, the freehand tool is going to be very basic. Just left click down and drag, and it's going to basically create whatever you're drawing. Now, these are actually line, um, line segments here. So if I send this to my cutter, it is going to cut those out. All right, it's going to recognize those. So let's go here. We can create a circle. And again, that's just the freehand tool. Let's you just go freely throughout the screen there. Now, notice because I finished it off in here, notice how that is enclosed. I can go in here. And make, well, I need to make that into an object first, but I can go in there and change the colors to those if I like. Now, I'm going to show you how I can convert this to an object here momentarily. All right. So let's go get rid of these here. Bam, bam. Perfect. The next tool I want to show you guys is the two-point line tool. All right. Two-point line, pretty self-explanatory. Left-click to get the, that line segment started. Left-click down and drag and just let go. Now, that creates that two-point uh, two point line tool there or um, two-point line or our line segment. I don't know why that was so difficult to get out, but that will create that line segment for me there. And I can just go here and again, just do whatever I need to to create that design I'm working with. All right. So again, just another quick tool to work with there. Now, the next one is pretty important. This is the Bezier tool. All right. The Bezier tool is one that I like to work with quite often as well as the B-spline tool. All right. Now watch this. The, the Bezier tool, let's say I want to just complete this process right here from here. See that? So I can left click down, make a little corner there. If I left click down and hold the left click, it's going to allow me to create kind of a curved or more of a rounded curve or around the line rather than that straight line. All right. But now watch this. If I left click again, see how it just creates a straight line segment if I just only left click. So let's do that again. Left click, left click, left click. And you can see it's just creating straight lines for me. Now here I held the left click down. That's why I created that curved line. So Let's say we get to a certain point in my design where I need to actually give it a curve. Let's left click and hold. Now I can just drag and you can see all I'm doing is dragging that little arrow key or that control arrow there, all right? So now we're gonna give it a different shape. We're gonna do the same thing here and go throughout my whole design. Now it's not giving me the straight lines. It's giving me 
a nice curved line. Now let's go back to straight on my to my straight line. I'm not gonna hold my left click anymore. I'm just gonna go ahead and left click, left click, left click, but not holding it down. If I hold it down, wouldn't get that curve there. All right. So again, the Bezier tool is one that I suggest you guys going out and practicing with. It's gonna be very, very useful. All right. All right, the next one I wanna show you guys is the beast blind. Now the beast blind is one that I prefer over all the other tracing tools, the one I've, I learned how to work with from the get-go. So it's, it's for me, is the most convenient, all right? So to work with that trace, that beast blind tool, what I wanna do is I wanna go here, left click to get my, my, line, my line segment started, but watch this. Notice how before with the, with the Bezier, it actually creates, let me go here, it actually creates a line segment for you. The beast blind tool almost does the opposite where it's actually creating the curved line for you and basically leaving the, the straight line segments as preview lines, all right? But watch this. If I want to create a straight line, let's say I get to a certain point on my design that I want to create a sharp corner, all I have to do is left click, left click. Now, when, once I reach that sharp point, I'm going to hold down the, the V as in Victor letter key, and now that's going to create that sharp corner for me. You see that? Again, we're going to go to this point right here. Hold down V as in Victor, and that's going to create that sharp corner for me. So that's holding down V as in Victor to be able to create that sharp corner. All right. Anybody have any questions on how we work through those different tracing tools there? Now, those are going to be the main ones you're going to work with. Um, the other ones, not so much. But, again, I would always recommend going in there and trying them out. Debra, can you repeat everything? I got pulled away from my desk at work. No problem, Debra. I got, I got, I'm recording it, so you guys can watch this later on. <laughs> All right, um, let's go ahead and before. I know, man, it's already two o'clock. This is ridiculous, but no problem. Uh, hopefully by the end of the day tomorrow, Debra, or by the end of the day Thursday. All right. So real quick, I do want to go over the text tool. Um, we did run. A, we, man, we ran out of time real quick today. All right. So text tool. We're gonna go ahead and left click to get started. Now what I see, now what I see, now Stefan, that's a little bit more detailed. Again, this is gonna be for the basic. Um, uh, Stefan's question was, how do you do a magic trap without the wizard? Um, the wizard would be the easiest way to do it, Stefan. But we do actually have a video from the past how we did it as well in Corel Draw. Again, it's just, that would be too many steps that would confuse everybody in here. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So with the, with the text tool here, Two ways to go about it. You can either left click down and start texting, or you can left click down and create a text box that you can text in, all right? Which is one that I see a lot of people always using, especially when starting out. I see this happening a lot. But no, not to worry, you can always just go in and delete it if you not, oh, don't want that. You can always go in here and just delete that if you needed to. So we can go in here, delete the text, bam, not to worry. What you really wanna work with is, we're just gonna left click on the text tool and left click on the location you wanna start typing, and we're just going to type out the word baseball. Now change the point size. You can go here, change the point size. Oh, we're going to highlight my design. If I want to change the point size, I can. See, I can make it smaller. We're going to make it bigger if I wanted to. Or you can also, just by selecting your little boxes on the outsides here of my text, I can change the dimensions of that. Now I can go, if I grab the actual corners, the actual corners here and expand it, it's going to change. It's going to keep it symmetrical. Or I can grab here down in the middle one here and change the actual dimensions of that particular text. I do apologize. I don't know where this cough came from, but I don't know, it's been raining all day and I think I'm getting sick again. This is ridiculous. But <laughs> but um all right so with this text tool a lot more we can do with it though. All right so we have the word baseball but let's say we want to do some unique things to this particular text. So Teresa change the letter spacing please is it bugging you? Is it killing you right now to see all the spacing like that? <laughs> all right, so again, to change the letter spacing, we're gonna go to shape tool. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Teresa, I thought, uh, okay. So Teresa wanted to see how to do the text, the, the, uh, the spacing between the letters again. All right, so to do that, I'm gonna go to the shape tool right here, the second feature down, the shape tool. Left click on that. Now I can change the space. Let's go here, shape tool. Now I can go here and change the spacing by selecting that little arrow right here to the right-hand side of my text. All right, so we can go in, we can go out, whatever you need to do to change the spacing. Yep, no problem, Teresa. All right, so let's say we want to add baseball, and let's say, let's just, for right now, let's say this is a baseball, all right? 
and we want to add the text right to that baseball. All right, so we have our path, we have baseball. Let's go up here to where it says text, and you see right here where it says fit text to path. We're going to go ahead and select that right there, so left click. Now you can see it gives me this little arrow. Now that arrow is pointing to the direction that I want to place the baseball, the text. All right, so if I hover over the path, which is the circle we created here, notice I can just drop it on there and there is a preview. Now you can see right there what that is, that red line in the middle right there, that's telling me that that text now is symmetrical. All right, so I can drop it on there. Let's go ahead and left click to drop it in there and bam, there's baseball. Now I can go here and change the dimension to bring it all the way around the circle if I wanted to. So if you have a large text or you have a longer text or a whole sentence and you want to get around that circle, that's how you would do it. All right, so we can do, let's go back to text here. And uh, actually, you know what, let's go to text right there and let's just do, let me show you what I'm doing because I'm still, I'm, again, I keep using that, that TRW Stone Wizard toolbar, but let's go to text up here and let's see what I want to work with. Oh, I want to do edit text right here. All right, so under text, I want to do edit text and let's just do the dog went to the park and loved it. Not sure why that came up to mind, but <laughs> that's what we're going to work with. Now I'm going to hit OK, and you can see what happened was it added that to my path, but because I had it such, so large just because I was using a word, it's all overlapping. So we're going to go here and change the dimensions, and you can see now by changing the dimensions, now we have, hey, the dog went to the park. Where's the dog? Okay, right here. <laughs> the dog went to the park and loved it. Bam, so there's that text around it. Uh, Debbie, where's here? You mean the the little the little boxes for my dimension to actually change the dimensions? Is that what you're saying too? Is that what you're referring to? Yeah, okay, the ones right here. So same thing as if you type the text out. So let's say the dog went. Notice if I do that, it still gives me the dimensions, or it gives me the uh, the the chance to change the dimensions there. So I can just select that little box. Increase the size or decrease the size of that. You see that? I can do the same thing when it's on a path. All right, so if I double click on the text, I can do the same thing for that and then separate it by going to the left. Or if I want to bring it closer together, I'm going to go to, I'm going to go up or to the right of the text. And now we have that there. All right, so to get rid of the text now, or excuse me, to get rid of the path, we can just double click on the line here on the path that we created. Hit delete on your keyboard, and now we just have this part of the design left. So now you have your your text going in that circular uh, motion there, in that circular path, and then we can add our logo right to the inside of our design there. So if you want to do, we have the basic shapes here, and we have a little heart at the top here. Now you have your design, bam. So that would be your little heart. You have the text on the outside. We can make that yellow if you wanted to, whatever color you wanted to do. But now you have a cute little design there that, you can, that you've just created using the text tool and some basic tools here in Corel as well. All right, so again, that text tool we have, edit text is gonna be very useful. Let's say we wanna edit the dog went here and change that. I can go to text, edit text right here, and then bam, there's the dog went. I can change that to TRW rules, hit okay. And bam, there's TRW rules. All right. Now, the last one I want to show you guys before, I know we've run out of, we're way over now, but no problem. Let me show you guys one last thing I want to show you here before we get you going. Now, let's say we have, let's say I have this particular design here. All right. So let's say I trace this design and uh, let me just go, let me just bring in a basketball real quick. All right. So let's say we have this basketball right here. I'm sure if you guys have been to past web webinars, you guys have already seen this. But basically what I want to do is, let's say I want to create an outline of this basketball here with the laces. All right, so what I can do is I can go circle here and just create an ellipse or a circle around my, my design or my object there. All right, so there's my baseball. Now let's say we created, I'm just going to go ahead and create some of uh, some laces, some of those grooves here just real quick. So I'm going to use that B-spline tool and I'm just going to go here and left click down. All right. So let's say we create that, and again, the whole point is not for the tracing part of it, guys. I want to show you something at the end of it. If you guys want to see how I'm doing this, I do have a webinar. It's called Tracing Made Easy with CorelDRAW. 
but I feel like this is the best way to show you what I want to show you here. All right, so again, just tracing this design. Now I'm using the B spline tool there that we um, that I showed off a little bit earlier. So there's my design. All right, so let's go ahead and get rid of that box, and there's my basketball. All right, nothing fancy, nothing crazy right now. Yeah, it's a basketball, but again, the lines are very thin. I want to make those lines stand out a little bit more. All right, so I can highlight my design here, and you can see at the top here we have the point sizes. All right, so right here I can change the point size to let's say 16. So hey, that looks a lot nicer. That actually looks like a real basketball now, right? Here's the issue. When I go to wireframe, view wireframe, notice what we're working with is still that thin line there. But what happened? I, ch I thought I changed that point size. The thing is, yes, you change the point size so that can be seen. But again, if you go to cut it, the cutter is not going to recognize it because it's still as line artwork, not an actual object. All right, so we need to convert those lines into an object. To do that, we're going to go up here to objects, and you see where it says convert outline to object here? So let's see what happens. Let me go ahead and go to wireframe and show you guys what happens when I go to object here. Convert, uh, or excuse me, convert outline to object. Left click on that, and you can see what happened. Now it converted that thing, that little thin line to that actual 18 point size. All right, so now we actually have these thick lines here that my cutter is going to recognize and cut around instead of just that one little thin line around my design. All right, now from there, notice how we have some overlapping uh, sections here. Not to worry, again, we can use that object shaping and then weld tool, and then bam, look at that. It's all welded together. Now we have our basketball here. All right, the last tool I want to show you guys real quick before we get out of here. The last tool I want to show you guys is a smart fill tool. All right, so let's say I want to fill these areas in, the white areas right here. All right, so I just want those areas to be um, basically not to have the outline, just to have those areas as the ball showing, and then the shirt will be the outline. Watch what I can do. I can go down here to the bottom. All right, so you can see it says smart fill tool. All right, now if you're working with X6, it's going to probably be up here at the top. All right, I think it's almost like the sixth one down if you're working with X6. But right here at the bottom, we have that Smart Fill tool. So if I left click on it, and you can see up here at the top as well, you have the different options for filling and uh, the different outlines that you can work with. But again, we're just going to do a simple fill, no outline here. So I'm just going to left click on those cavities or those areas that are open. And you can see it's filling them in for me. Bam, bam, bam. Now, watch what happens if I remove the outline that I created. You see that? Now we have just this showing. All right. So we can go ahead and make that orange. Hey, there's my basketball. All right. So what do you guys think? Not bad, right? Now we can go right click here. We're going to go group objects. Now these are all just the basketball. So you can see what's going to happen in this case is just the shirt's going to show in through. And then we have the fill, the basketball. Um, the only thing that we're going to press onto the actual guard. All right. So I know we went a little bit quicker through those last different features there. Um, but again, I am recording this, so you guys will be able to watch this later on as well. So if you guys want to follow along, just again, we're going to go ahead and uh, <clears throat> hopefully I'll have it uploaded. I'm going to try today, but hopefully by tomorrow, if not, like I said, by Thursday. Um, Suzanne, I have a one question. On the TRW files that I buy, you have CDR and SVG files. I usually take the SVG since they are much smaller, but it would be better to use the CDR file, or is there no difference? Uh, Suzanne, yeah, you can use the CDR file. Here's the only issue is if, let's say I save a file in X7, a CorelDRAW file in X7, I can't open that CDR file in X6, all right? Now, I can create the CDR file in X6 and open in X7, but I can't do the oldest version. So let's say if I make a CDR file in X6, I can't open that file in X5. I can only open it in X6 and X7. All right. Now, if you have the option to do a CDR, just open the CDR file. Um, that's the one, you know, it's either I usually work with CDR or the EPS file um, from our file types. But, yeah, if, if you have the option of just being able to open the CDR file, Suzanne, just work with the CDR file. No problem at all, guys. All right, guys. Well, again, uh, do apologize for going a little bit over. Uh, I'm sure you guys don't mind it at all. But <laughs> thank you again, everybody, for joining me and sticking through the whole webinar. Um, we are going to be coming out with a lot of new webinars, a lot of more detailed webinars. We're working on a new uh, myself and Dustin's actually going to be doing a lot of uh, a lot of the new webinar structures. So 
it's gonna be it's, it, things are getting pretty interesting around here. We're we're gonna come up with a lot of new a lot of new um, tools and education to help you guys grow your businesses. So very exciting. I think you guys can really love it. Uh, again, it's gonna be a little bit more. Uh, we're trying to work on a little bit more structure for the webinars. Again, just to help you guys and uh, keep you guys up to date with the whole designing process and everything else that comes with, uh, you know, with the wizard, with the Corel Draw, the Silhouette Designer Edition. We want to make sure that you guys are all we're able to hit every every aspect of the industry as far as helping you guys grow your businesses. Uh, but you know, depending because I understand not everybody's able to afford Corel Draw right off the bat, so um, it, it wouldn't make any sense for us to not do webinars on the Designer Edition, some different programs as well. All right, guys. Again, I do want to appreciate it. I do appreciate everybody stopping by. Uh, so, what files should I have to know what the fonts are later? Uh, Teresa, just the biggest thing is you want to make sure you convert it to curves. So, when you type something out, let's say you type out cheer, and you want, let's say, a specific, and you're using a specific font for this particular text here, just make sure that you go up here. Oh, sorry, that's the envelope tool. Uh, just right click on it and then do a convert to curves. All right, when you convert it to curves, it's no longer a true type font. It's, it's it's an object now. So now you can go from here, and if you send me this file or I send you this file, you're going to be able to see this exact text. All right, it's not going to change it on you. All right. Now, as far as the file, you can either do the CDR or you can do the EPS or the SVG. As long as your design is converted, then you should have no problems. Oh, Teresa, so you can know the name later? I, w I mean, there's not really any easy way to do that. You're just saying if you if you type something out just so it so you know later on, I would just type it in there or I would just write it down. I mean, honestly, it's it's one of those things that you kind of just have to remember what the name of the of the font was, or you can just type it down. I mean, uh, kind of just keep track of what you're working with, what the font is. And honestly, for me, it's become almost to the part to the point where I kind of just remember the fonts is. I just go through so many, and I try to find so many different fonts that are going to work with 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 the rhinestones, or fonts that are going to work with good with multiple glitter colors, or multiple easy weed colors, or sign vinyl. I mean, it just it just really depends, and I've just gotten to the point where I kind of recognize a lot of the different fonts. Um, but as far as that, Teresa, I mean, honestly, it's just kind of keep track of it. If you want to just do like a little snippet, you can do basically type this out here. Oh, where's my little snippet tool? And then you could do like you know, if you want to keep record of it, you can do Arial like that so if you have it if you have a set like that and then just export it how it is or you can just uh, maybe under your mockups when you're creating a mockup Teresa just do you know you can type in the font that you worked with just to keep track of it all right all right guys again appreciate everybody stopping by hopefully everybody learned something new today um, again we're gonna come in, we're gonna be coming out with a lot more webinars we're gonna structure them a little bit better spe uh, starting hopefully in the next couple of weeks we're gonna just working really hard on the getting you guys more educated and get you guys a lot more um, more materials out there so you guys can get everything you guys need to get done, especially especially with the holidays right on the corner. Can you guys believe it again? Man, Christmas, Thanksgiving, I mean, Halloween is one of my favorites. So it's we got, a, we got the busy season coming up, and we want to make sure you guys are prepared and ready for it. All right, guys. Again, thank you guys for stopping by. Make sure you guys uh, check out. I think we have some pretty cool things. Let me see. I thought we did release something. Oh, I know what it is. TRW Stone Wizard 3.0. We're working hard on the videos. We should have it released by next week as the game plan. All right, guys. So next week is the game plan for that. So stay tuned. I no longer have to say soon. I can actually let you guys know. It's it's in the plans to get it released next week. All right, guys. Again, thank you all for stopping by. Appreciate everybody. Uh, have a great day. If you guys have any questions at all, feel free to give us a call. 941-755-1696. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a great day.